Let's go to Somalia now, where a planned session in Parliament failed to take place after the country's House Speaker reportedly seized control of the House using heavily armed guards. Meanwhile, security chiefs in Mogadishu are accusing the Speaker of failing to adhere to parliamentary security procedures. CGTN's Abdulaziz Bilo is keeping tabs on this unfolding political crisis. He sent us this report. Outside Somalia's federal parliament, heavy security presence. African Union troops are also present to boost Somali forces in securing the lawmaking body, as rival lawmakers are due to meet and debate a confidence motion against Parliament Speaker. A move by a section of lawmakers to impeach the Parliament Speaker has ignited a political standoff that has now entered its third week. On Saturday, the country's president intervened and suspended a Parliament session. The embattled Speaker now says that he won't resign, despite the latest increasing pressure. It's unfortunate that the executive branch wants me to resign, the same executive that created this crisis and thus has to resign for failing to be held accountable. They're the ones responsible for the ongoing political instability. They've created the chaos and therefore they must resign. The police chief says that the parliament speaker violated security procedure by bringing in unauthorized army security personnel without authorization from security agencies. We agreed that no armed personnel can enter parliament for the sake of security. Security forces have no business in the political rift. The speaker and his deputy came to parliament with armed guards. When is this parliament session did not take place as planned. The latest political tension here in Somalia has divided the country's parliament into two. A section of members of parliament want the speaker of the house impeached while the second batch say that they came to the parliament today to discuss other house business. In this case, the border wall that Kenya is creating along the border it shares with Somalia. Parliamentarians remain divided, with no clear sign to an end to the ongoing political bickering. We elected him as speaker based on his performance and track record. But in the morning when we came here, we were surprised to see troops loyal to him manning parliament. As a result, nobody was able to enter the parliament chambers. Jawari will take full responsibility of whatever happens in parliament. Once a motion of confidence has been brought against the speaker, what's expected of him is to hand over power until parliament decides his fate. No new date has been set for the next parliament session, but the ongoing crisis has created renewed concerns among Somalia's international partners. The African Union forced Amisom that's in Somalia to fight Al-Shabaab has also intervened, urging lawmakers to prioritize the interest of the nation and the public rather than to cause chaos. Abdulaziz Bilal, CGTN, Mogadishu, Somalia. Well, let's get you some perspective on those developments coming out of Somalia. I'm joined live in studio by security expert Dr. Mustafa Ali. Dr. Mustafa, always a pleasure to have you with us. Um, armed guards in Somalia's parliament, certainly a dramatic turn of events. How concerned should we be? Yeah, we should be. Um, this kind of conflict within Somalia parliament and within the parliamentarians and the executive is bound to be taken advantage of by groups like Al-Shabaab, um, by, 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 by the tribal actors that are positioning their people to uh, to have uh, uh, more power. And ultimately this is uh, uh, significantly at the moment weakening the federal government mm -hmm. of Somalia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, Somalia is already considered one of the most corrupt countries in the world. As you pointed out, a country that is facing serious security challenges. It seems it can ill afford such political rifts or tensions at this time. Yeah, they shouldn't really be engaged in this kind of conflict, especially at the federal level. Already you have um, state actors from outside the region, particularly in the Middle East, that are trying to undermine in Somalia federal government by trying to engage directly with the uh, um, semi-autonomous regional governments. Now, when you see the kind of uh, challenges that uh, we are seeing in parliament, including the accusations against um, the, 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 the speaker himself, mm -hmm. in, uh, that, that includes uh, obstruction uh, of the constitutional review process and abuse of power, that is undoubtedly going to weaken Somalia uh, uh, further. And groups are definitely going to take advantage of a weakened uh, uh, federal government. They can hardly afford this kind of conflict 
at this time. Mm. And of course, this isn't the first time, though, that we've seen these kind of political tensions between high-ranking members of the political body of the country. We've seen a rift between the former president and the prime minister. Why do you think such tensions persist in the country? Somalia is uh, still a very tribal a kind of feudal society and there is more uh, um, there, the people pay more attention to their tribal affiliation rather than Somali as a nation state mm -hmm. and this will not be the last time we're seeing this kind of uh, uh, rifts and conflict this is bound to continue as long as Somali is still you know kind of uh, almost worship their mm -hmm. tribes and ethnic communities rather than building a coherent nation state, then this is bound to happen again. Mm. Dr. Mustafa Ali, thank you so much for that analysis on a political situation in um, Somalia that the country can ill afford.